Judges 6, 18. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee. And bring forth my presence, or my offering, my gift, my tribute. And set it before thee. And he, the Lord, said, I will tarry here. I will tarry until thou come again. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. We give you glory, honor, and praise. You're worth it. You're worthy. You're more important than an appointment. <laughs> and you're better than any sandwich. Amen. We love you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. So the battle within is a battle of preparation. Look at your neighbor and say, preparation. Look at your other neighbor and say, preparation. Look at the dry bones and tell them preparation. Whether it's counting the cost, whether it's charting the course, and let me just say this too, any old person can drive a boat, but it takes a true captain to navigate the course, to chart the course. Whether it's receiving godly counsel, I didn't say getting godly counsel, I said receiving godly counsel. Whether it's taking inventory or whether it's making, and listen, an affirmative decision with ourselves. We all start before we start. And we're doing before we're doing. Amen. See, Gideon was preparing his present or his tribute, his offering. He was preparing his present before presenting his present. Because it all starts in the heart. Whatever direction you're going in now, whatever you're doing right now, it has its origins and it was on the inside. It started there before you did anything, before you took a step in that direction. Listen, you were already going in that direction. I ain't doing nothing with my life. Yep, and that was going on too. And sure enough, it's a self-fulfillment prophecy. <laughs> Amen. A lot of people make plenty of preparations for their wedding. This is an example. They make many preparations for their wedding, but bring little to nothing of preparation to their marriage. Might spend a whole year and a half on that wedding, preparing for a wedding, but they never prepare for a marriage. You've got to prepare before you present. Let's look at that word prepare. Y'all good this morning? Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word prepare, a definition would be make ready beforehand for a specific purpose. To make ready beforehand for a specific purpose. I thought it was really interesting when I was sitting around the computer, uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, because you really have two words in that word. The word pre is a prefix meaning before or prior to, and I like this one, in advance of. Pre means in advance of. Very interesting here. The word pair, P-A-R-E. It means to reduce or remove by cutting. So it's not about, because when we think preparation, we think about gathering. But yet, real preparation is about letting go. And so you take the two words, pre, in advance of, and pair, remove by cutting. So in advance, you're going to remove by cutting. What does the master say in John chapter 15? I love you too much. I'm paraphrasing here. I love you too much to leave you like you are. I want you to bear fruit. So if you ain't doing good, I'm going to cut you. 
if you are doing good, we still need to prune so we can bear more fruit. I'm going to cut you. So you cut if you do and you cut if you don't. You're pruned if you do or pruned if you don't. Why? Because he's making preparation. Sounds a whole lot like circumcision, doesn't it? The cutting away of the flesh. In the Old Testament, it was used as a permanent mark in the body to symbolize the permanent covenant that God made with His people. But today's circumcision is of the heart. It's in the spirit. So the first thing that starts in the heart, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to start cutting away stuff. It's not about gathering stuff. We've got to cut away stuff. Cut it, cut it. If we're really wanting a pair, we've got to cut it off because we want to bear fruit. And in Hebrews 12.1, Hebrews 12.1, I will take a little bit of liberty on this one. Give you some Bobbyology. I'll always let you know it's up front. Amen. When I'm kind of adding my two cents in there. But I think this is of the Holy Spirit. Let your spirit bear witness. Hebrews 12.1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, all right, okay, there's a lot of people around. Now what? Let us lay aside. In other words, let us cut away in advance. Every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us or entangles us. Not just sin. What's weighing you down? There could be all kinds of stuff weighing you down. Did you know who you're running with may be weighing you down? If God's called you to be a carpenter, you need to hang out with other carpenters. Don't let your loyalty stand in the way of your destiny. You've heard me say this. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need to find a new group. Because you'll just stay stagnant, just swapping the same information. Oh, you ain't ready for me this morning. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to have change to have growth. And you've got to seek those who have doing that are doing what you want to do. Okay, you need to sit around rooms with them. You need to listen to what they say because they've been there and done that, and they know. Some of it you'll like. Some will be okay. Some of it will be hard. But you can't do better until you know better. Amen. And so you humbly submit yourself in a room and you stay in that group and you keep your mouth shut for a long time. You'll probably be able to contribute something after a, after a while. But I'm telling you, when I'm in a room with my pastor and the overseers in the fellowship, I get real quiet. Because I'm going to hear things that could change the direction of my life. I could listen for 10 minutes to save me 10 years of heartache. Glory be to God, y'all. I'm excited about it. And it says, and then, that's what I want to put, because let us run, and let us run with, I know in the Scripture, you know, for all those doctrinal dans out there, I realize in Revelation it says, don't add to and don't take away. I get that. But when I was reading it, I was hearing between the beset us and let us that with real preparation, when you cut away with stuff, so easily beset us and then, and then, and then, after you've cut away, after you've laid stuff aside, and you've done your preparation, and then let us run the race with patience. How can you run with baggage? Because you'll be like most people that are in desperate times and desperate situations. They get hold of a good word, they're like a house on fire for about three months. Well, of course you're weary, baby. You got all that baggage. 
A true marathon runner will strip down to just bare necessities. Because that extra half a pound ain't nothing at first. Hit about mile 15, it feels heavy. And so as we're preparing, the battle within is the battle of preparation. It's the battle of cutting things away. People want to run the race and then, and then start to try to cut things away. You cut first. Then you start running your race. It's called preparation. Everybody wants to jump into the race. They get excited about jumping into the race. Well, hallelujah, I'm excited you're excited about jumping into the race. But you're not able to run yet. It's like I went through a long series of process of, of getting a personal trainer certification. It's, that, that, it's run out because I haven't used it in many years. But one of the things that was just popping out to me after going through all this training is that you see somebody who wants to go into the gym. They haven't been in the gym a long time. They know they need to get exercise. They go in, they'll get on the treadmill, and they'll kind of go for just a few minutes. They'll be breathing heavy. They'll be sweating, and uh, they'll get off of it. They won't stay on there too long, but they're like, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere, right? And they'll even use scripture. Ooh, she'll bless the day of small beginnings, right? You know, whew, I got a good workout in today. And I just love to see their countenance change when I said, no, you didn't at all. All of a sudden, you. It's going to be a long time before you can get a good workout in. Well, I'm breathing heavy and I'm sweating and everything. What do you mean I didn't get a good workout in? It's like, no, you've not got a good workout in. What you're experiencing right now is oxygen debt. Eventually, you'll build your lungs and your capacity to actually get a workout in. So everybody wants to get in the race. But how many are going to stay in the race? It's those that cut away before they start running. Are y'all still with me? 1 Samuel 7, 3. No, excuse me. Exodus 15, 2. I'm sorry, guys. Exodus 15, 2. It says... The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I, I, I will, I will prepare him a habitation. Prepare. Well, you can have a devil cast out of you, but what does the scripture say? You keep it nice and tidy, and it's empty, there's seven more going to come in. What have you been doing preparing-wise? See, when God comes in and he wants to prepare a habitation for him, he doesn't want to compete with anything. Now, by his grace and his mercy, he will. But you're not getting the full effect. <laughs> Amen. Is anybody in here this morning? It's when we totally make room for him. Why are we going to fill up this place with him? He's big enough to fill it all. What are we cutting away? Got to make, we, I will prepare him a habitation. 1 Samuel 7 3. 1 Samuel 7 3. I'm just kind of giving you the highlights. There's many other scriptures that bear, bear this out about preparing. And Samuel spoke unto all of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with what? Is it on the screen? Oh, I was getting ready to say, I didn't hear anybody, so I didn't know if it was on the screen or not. And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with what? Part of your heart, half your heart, quarter of your heart. You know, listen, the Lord gets me on this stuff all too. Well, I love you, Lord. And he says, I said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And then we think about all those checks we got in our spirit we didn't follow through with because we wanted to or we didn't want to. 
<laughs> Amen. Why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I... Anyways, if you, if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then, then put away. Then put away. Cut off. Cut them out. And Ashtaroth from among you. And what? Prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. Prepare your hearts and then serve. Prepare and then serve. Can you imagine a professional athlete that did not have spring training? We'll just go with football. You wasn't in spring training. You wasn't at fall camp. You just showed up on campus, and then you really didn't do anything in the weight room. You didn't do anything out the track. You didn't do anything out on the field. You just showed up, throws on some pads, and decided to get there in the game. You're going to get your clock cleaned. You're going to be slow and sluggish. I've said it before that a champion is not made in the ring. They're just recognized there. They become a champion when nobody was looking and nobody was around. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 15.1. Let's throw some more word out there. First Chronicles 15.1. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared, prepared, prepared a place for the ark of God, which in that time was the presence of God on earth. He prepared a place for his presence. And if you go back and study it out, David gave billions with a B, billions of dollars towards the house of God. I'm not in the materialism and having things just to have things, you all. It's got to be rooted in the kingdom. And, it's, and you got to, listen, you always got to answer the question why. Because that's what God cares about, the motives, the why. But I, but I will say this. Why is it that if a city wants to build a new $700 million stadium for its sports team, everybody gets on board and thinks it's great. But if the church down the street wants to build on to its church and have a new kid's uh, a, a, a bigger area for its kids, then all of a sudden it's a struggle. Hey Amen. Even here in this state, I'll really get you in this state. We can have a head football coach that makes more money than anybody in our government in this state, and we don't care. Just keep winning. That's not a problem. But what would happen if, if I'm because, you know, you, you guys know that, you know, we're going to have to make more preparations for our kids' ministry in the future. And we're going to have to do something. And it's in, unless God can do it, unless somebody comes in here to decide to do the work all for free, we're going to have to raise funds. We're going to have to do something at that time. It, it's, it's, it's amazing how I could go out and... The, the, the area and try to fundraise for that and get all kinds of weird looks and opinions and they'll start judging you. But if I said I'm raising money because we're going to get a big titantron for those that can't make it to the Alabama games, we're going to show up at the park and we're going to have this big humongous titantron kind of deal. We all can watch it together. I'll give to that, brother. I'll give to that. I'm just saying, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. I'm not against sports. If you, listen, let me just say this too because there'll be people watching online that'll, that'll take it in the wrong direction because they don't know me. I'm an Alabama football fan. I do watch it, okay? But I like it, but I don't love it. Why? Because you should never love anything that can't love you back. Amen. Think about that one. That'll go real deep on you. You love people, not things. And even when you're a Christian, you'll love those that can't love you back. Amen. They have the capacity to, but they just don't want to. Amen. Second Chronicles twelve fourteen. 
Let's talk about Rehoboam. You had, you had David, then you had uh, son Solomon, then after Solomon, his son Rehoboam, which never took godly counsel like he should. He wanted to, listen, instead of taking godly counsel from the older men who've been there and done that and know a few things, he decided to take counsel for all, from all his, I'll break it down to modern vernacular, all his homies. And he had the kingdom stripped from him because he made a bad decision. And here's part of the reason why not. And it says, and he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. He didn't cut away in advance enough when he wanted to seek the Lord. I love it how the, the master said when he was getting ready to go into the garden of the Gethsemane, he says, he says, my time's now. He says, the enemy comes, but listen, but he has nothing in me. There's nothing for him to latch on to. Hallelujah. Ezra 7.10. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. If you go read about Rehoboam who didn't prepare his heart, and then you read about Ezra who did prepare his heart, uh, totally different outcomes. Well, I just don't understand why. Let's dissect your life. It still amazes me how people will not prepare themselves to take counsel from the Lord, go outside of that, and then things fall apart, and they're surprised. I'm like, baby, that's how it's supposed to happen. You're, you're acting like it's odd. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. All you got to do is just repent. Just turn around. He'll get you back on track. Amen. I said amen. He'll get you back on track. You did this to yourself. Just own it. He loves you. Psalms 10, 17. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Of the what? What does it say in James? Submit yourself, son, to God. Then, then you can resist the devil. He says, because God says he resists the proud but gives grace to the what? Don't ever get in front of the God's presence with an... In Listen, I know if you're a born-again, tongue-talking Christian, still, don't get in front of the God's presence and start having an entitlement mentality. He knows his word, he wrote it, and he's good for it. Believe me. The problem's not in that direction. All of his promises are yes and amen, but did, was you always yes and amen? Nobody drop nothing on the floor because it'll rattle through the area in here. It's quite, for those watching on, it's real quiet in here right now. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. We spoke about humility a few weeks ago on Wednesday nights. If you weren't here, you missed it. We defined what it is and what it isn't. That will prepare their heart. That will cause thine ear to hear. Amen. So Gideon went to prepare a sacrifice for the Lord. But in order to do so, he had to walk away from the presence of the Lord. The battle within doesn't happen when you're in his presence. It happens when you walk away from him. I've heard this statement too that idle hands make for a devil's playground. Some of the worst nonsense you could ever get yourself into is because you have nothing going on. And all of a sudden, your flesh starts giving you ideas. And then the devil comes along, and he's like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And he starts giving you reasons to talk you into it, like a, a really good used car salesman. Because you started the car up and it kind of hesitated for a second. And that was enough that you should have walked away. But he, he assured you that it's okay. 
Now, this make and model always does that. Like you've really spent hours of research into, you're just going to take his word for it. Amen. And just like the devil too, right? You bring it back a week later. And they're like, I'm sorry, it was sold as is. You saw the sticker on it. Well, you guarantee, I didn't guarantee you anything. And just like the devil, he'll talk you into it. And then when you fall flat on your face, he'll come and say, look what a loser you are. What are you talking about, you dirty dog? You're the one that talked me into it. You gave me the idea. He'll try to convince you, and then when you fall, he'll condemn you. Amen. But Gideon left his presence, listen, to prepare a sacrifice. Under the new covenant, however, we don't have to ever leave his presence. But our sacrifice doesn't come from without either. Our sacrifice comes from within. Because the battle within is a battle of denial. Can I cut it away? I've got to prepare. I've got to prepare. I've got to prepare. Can I cut it away? Because the more you want to do for God, listen, he says that humble yourself in the, in, the mighty, in the presence of God, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. He doesn't have a problem with you being exalted. He has a problem with you exalting yourself. But you don't get exalted until you humble yourself. Humbling yourself, just to, I can't go over everything I went on Wednesday night. Humbling yourself is not putting yourself down. It's just lifting others and God up. Because he knows if you humble yourself in his presence, there will be more of me in you. And I want people to see more of me. So the more of him that is in you, the more he wants you to be seen. And so he doesn't have a problem with you being exalted. But it's a battle of denial. Because listen, you, you, you got to do this on the, on, the, on the front end. As I said, before you enter the race, you got to count the costs. As I, t- I told my spiritual son, listen, the further you go, with the more promotion you go with the Lord, listen, the more freedoms you lose. You can't go where you used to go. Do what you used to do. Talking about football, I love me some uh, uh, buffalo hot wings on game day. And I hear Hooters got some pretty good hot wings. And there's one that's only about a half a mile away from my house. But guess what I can't do anymore on game day? I can't go to Hooters and get wings on game day. Ain't that the preacher down the road in that church? What's he doing up here in the Hooters? I'm just here for the wings. I'm just here for the wings. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you, the, the further you go with God, listen, but listen, he doesn't disappoint. He doesn't disappoint. You might not be able to go to Hooters for wings, but you're still going to have some good wings. And there's going to be so much in your life. It's worth it. You might not be able to have as much free time as you. Listen, one of my spiritual fathers said this years ago, and, and it bears true. When you really sell out for the Lord, you don't have as much time for you as you used to listen you don't have as much quantity but when you do have time it is so quality he will take care of you amen throw Romans 12 1 up there I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you You present your bodies a living sacrifice. The problem with the living sacrifice is it wants to crawl off the altar all the time. 
A living sacrifice. A living what? Now, that's almost like a dirty word these days, isn't it? Like repent or honor. Or how about this four little word? Work, W O R K. Help wanted signs everywhere. I'm going to leave that alone. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. Hey, this is New Testament, guys. You do this. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, which means set apart, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other translation, it says, which is your order of worship. This is how you worship. Well, I want to worship God, but I, I can't turn the music on at the house. I can't be out at the church house. No, you can worship God 24-7. Why? By presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Because the battle within is the battle of denial. 1 Peter 4.1. 1 Peter 4.1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Because that's where the rub's at right there all together. Your spirit don't want to do it, but your body says, man, wasn't that great? And it's funny how we all of a sudden get amnesia. Man, remember them days when we used to do this or we used to do that? Or, you know, you're just too uptight. You need to relax a little bit. And, we, and, and, and it's kind of like, you know, Facebook. I'll just be honest with you. You get the highlight reel from everybody. You either get the highlight reel or there's stuff that you just, it's none of your business. You shouldn't have put on there. And let me just give you some advice. When you take your problems out, you get exposed. But when you take your problems up, you get covered. That's why we have uh, spiritual authorities in our lives. And when times get really tough and we just need to open up about some stuff, we take them up to our authorities. Why? Because we'll get covered. But you just take, put your stuff out there to anybody and it's going, you're going to be exposed. I well, thought we're supposed to pray for each other. Call them up. Go meet them at the mall. I don't know. Amen or oh me. I feel like Jeremiah this morning. Y'all will be all right and you will live through this. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Talks about pleasures of sin for a season. And your mind doesn't remember everything that you lost. It just remembers the fun few hours you had. Amen. It's very quiet in here. Y'all making me nervous. Steve, Andrew, kind of just have peripheral vision. Anybody comes rushing... Take them out for me. Romans 13, 14. But put ye on... This is what you need to do again. You, you. There's just there's so many prayers of Christians is God, 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 God. And you start reading the scriptures and it's you, 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 you. Are you preparing? Are you, are you, are you denying? Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I think I've said this a few weeks back. He didn't have an affair with his secretary the first time he laid eyes on her. She was... Amen. Yeah, might as well. He gets no compliments at home. Scripture says that a woman wants to be loved, but a man wants to be honored. And every time he comes through the door at home, it's rah, 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 this and rah, rah, rah. And, if you, and, if, and if it's not complain about this and complain about that, then he gets the to-do list. And then how he has to have an ear to listen to her complain the whole time, or otherwise, you know, he's, you don't listen to me. 
And all of a sudden, at work, he walks by one more than she likes. That tie looks nice on you. It matches your eyes. Your eyes are popping this morning. Oh, 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 oh. She's not requiring anything of me. She's not giving me the low down, the beat down. And all of a sudden, you find yourself standing a little straighter. Oh, okay. Huh. Don't think anything of it. A few days later, you walk in. You know, when I was editing your speech the other day, I've got to admit, after I've done editing, I think that you were brilliant. I think that third point was phenomenal. If that doesn't knock him dead, I don't know what will. You did a good job. He's getting honor. And that happens little by little by little until she feels bold enough to flirt a little bit his way. And he's now far enough along that he'll receive it and maybe flirt a little bit back. And so he's finding at work what he should have at home. And everybody talks about Delilah, Delilah, Delilah. Yo, she's the seducerous Delilah. And it makes it out like Delilah's some kind of hip-swinging porno star that just, you know, he couldn't, Samson couldn't get his eyes off that stuff. But yet the Bible says zero, zilch, zing about the way she looks. She seduced him by what she said. And if you don't watch yourself, be careful who you give your ear to because whoever has your ear has your head. And you don't make provision for the flesh because the flesh like that. You had no idea how she looked, but now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, she's kind of cute. But it was everything that she's saying that made you feel good about you. That's why you wanted to be around her. You hadn't slept with her yet. You don't know anything about those kind of sensations. But you still felt good being around her. So just like any kind of addiction. I mean, you don't drink alcohol because it made you feel horrible the moment you tasted it. Smoking a weed, you don't... Why? Because it all has its point of you're out there. You're escape. You're self-medicating yourself. That's all it is. I feel good when I'm around her. Therefore, I want to be around her. And the more I'm around her, the better I feel. And just like anything with the flesh, more, 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 more. See, it'll take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to, longer than you want to stay. And it'll always cost more than you want to pay. Luke 9, 23. Let's see if you like this one. There's some red letters here. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, If any will come after me, let him deny himself. Cut off. Cut. Cut. Cut in advance. Cut, cut, deny himself and take up his cross. They understood that language, what that meant. You got to die to yourself daily. The cross, a place of death, crucifixion. You don't die from the nail prints, you die from suffocation. You can't get no more ruah, life, breath. That flesh has got to suffocate daily. Don't give it any air. And follow me. So the battle within is a battle of preparation, but the battle within is also a battle of denial. Can you prepare yourself? Yes, you can. Will you? I don't know. You do, and God knows.
We still have, I still haven't exact, uh, extracted everything that I wanted to out of this one verse. Amen. But are we cutting away? Are we laying aside before we start our race? Or we just want to just jump into it without any preparations? You wouldn't want a surgeon to just jump into a surgery, would you? Would you want them to kind of do some background, some history, look at all the tests, look at all the x-rays, check everything out, kind of even check with other surgeons on the procedures or anything odd about it? Or do you just want them just to go right in there and say, all right, let's kind of explore around and cut somebody. Woo-hoo, give me a scalpel. Some of the best food is prepared sometimes days in advance. Well, what separates this barbecue joint from that barbecue joint preparation? They just threw it on the grill as soon as you ordered. This one's been smoking. You can taste the difference. Listen, and everybody around you will be able to taste the difference in your life when they taste you when you've had preparation with God. I'm getting fresh stuff right now. Why did it say the altar? Because a good, because a good meat is a smoked meat, that smoke flavor from the wood. That means wood had to be on fire. The crucifixion of the wood of the cross, the fires, the impurities that he burns out. And the altar of incense is the smoke, the prayers. The prayers that come up in your life. Stand to your feet. Turn it up a little bit. Here's the, here, here's, here's the good news. If you don't like the direction of your life, you can change it. But nothing will change in your life until you do. Nothing will work, start working in your life until you do. With all these that I've presented this morning as we go for, further through this message series, listen, God's got His end. He's got His part. He's good. He is an ever-present help in the time of need. But He's also like a gentleman. He's not going to bum rush you. He stands at the door and knocks. Well, I wish Jesus would come on up in here and eat supper with me. Let him in. Now, I don't want to do that because if he comes rolling up in here, he's going to want to do things his way. The only one that has all the answers, that has your best interests in your heart even more than you, he loves you more than even love you, and we know you love yourself but he loves you more than you love you. Does have the right direction. Does have the right answers. And all he's asking is to come in and just, just let me cut on you a little bit. I know it's painful at first, but this is going to produce fruit. Let's cut away some things before we start this journey, new, new journey together. Let me cut off some things. Let's talk about some, some pain that you're going to have to go through because you're so used to doing this your way. You're so used to reacting this way. You're, you're, you're so used to these things that, that to be honest with you, uh, you really don't believe I'm enough. So you want to fill your life with these other things because you, 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 self-medicating yourself. Hmm. He's our source for a reason. Because he's the only all in all. But he loves us. And the battle within. There's so many. And if, if, if you haven't caught this thing, I'll say the battle within is a battle of fill in the blank. Because it's all these things. But praise God, we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ who wants just to prepare us, who's teaching us the don'ts, not just the do's. 
because he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Thoughts of peace and a future and a hope. Amen.